Hi, good afternoon, Ms. Paul. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Very well. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, so today the SLHA is hosting its um, you know, monthly chef's table. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how long you've been attending the chef's table and why do you think it's important to have that type of meeting? I think I've been attending the chef's table more or less ever since it started. It's very important to have that meeting so all of us can really look at the industry as a whole, see what's new, what's going on, what we can do to improve it, what the issues are, what are some of the problems that are being faced by the hoteliers, how together as a group in we can apply to the ministry, to government, to get them to address some of the issues of the current that are not being given due attention. So it's a meeting where we get together, we sit, we look at the issues, like I said, and then we decide what is the next course of action for us to take. So I think it's also a very good idea for the hoteliers to get to know one another, to stay together, and any new hoteliers who have come on stream can join the group in and then they can decide what it is they would like and look at current issues, like we look at what's new. Um, for this time, you notice we have some of our suppliers here, our liquor suppliers, food suppliers, who are really here to show up what they do, so they can benefit from the hoteliers. Um, we can buy from them, so we can all help one another and learn from one another. And I think it's a wonderful idea to get everybody together um, so we can really achieve our desired objective. joining us today. It is one of my favorite um, events every month, the Chef's Table, because I feel that we don't see enough of each other. Um, this is why, in addition to the Chef's Table, we want to come up and, and make uh, this happen regularly, the, the social mixers, um, which we have done once, but um, as you perhaps know, on December 17 is our quarterly, our first quarterly annual meeting, and we have a social mixer planned after, so I'm looking at all my hoteliers and friends and say, please be there and let us spend some good time together and really exchange what's going on in our lives. I want to thank the chef's table, Mr. Winston Anderson, who is the chairperson, and his team, Ross, Paul, Paul, for having put this fantastic venue together and of course I want to congratulate Chef Olado for, for his new venture, on his new venture here. We wish you the greatest of success. We didn't want to share you with Rodney Bay, so Freya needs you, but we want you to be as successful here as you are so Freya and we want to thank you, of course, for hosting us today. So thank you, Chef Orlando. I'll keep it short because I know we're probably all ready to have lunch. Um, just another date I want to remind you of is, uh, well, I said, it's December 17, and uh, the board of directors and uh, selected channel managers will attend a marketing meeting that the Tourism Authority has put together for December 4. They have limited numbers access, so it's something new for us, but we will be sure that whatever happens on that day is shared with everyone, and also Norani will reach out and see how we can put together the group that will go and attend the meeting. Next year, as we um, go on with our annual, with our quarterly meetings, we will ensure that there is a marketing update from the Tourism Authority um, at each of these meetings. So. We also want to eventually um, share with you some of the events we are planning for the first quarter of 2020. With all of that said, let me hand over or back to Yola. Thank you again for being here and I look forward to the presentations by Ministry of Tourism and uh, Lorraine and the gentleman from Ministry of Agriculture. The theme today, I think, is a very important one and a very fitting one. Um, as it says, linkages and synergies. Um, and it's, there's no better way to end the year um, than on that one. Because what we're really doing today is again showcasing and reinforcing that tourism cannot and will not succeed 
unless all of us in all sectors join hands together and support each other. And this is what today is all about. We all know um, that tourism is the mainstay of the economy and the owners relies on us to deliver consistently good product. But the owners, as we all know, do not rely only on hoteliers, but it relies equally on our farmers, um, fisheries, and all the different suppliers, the vendors, and the list goes on. Now, as we look back maybe over the last 40 years, um, we've seen improve, improvement in tourism. And ironically, this morning I met a guest uh, at my hotel and we were having a conversation. And he actually worked in St. Lucia some 30 odd years ago um, as a chef. And he's back after 30 odd years. And he was amazed having gone around the island to see the transformation that has happened to St. Lucia and to the tourism industry. So while we sometimes say, well, we're not moving, we're not growing. When you listen to someone who knew it 30 years ago, we really have to look back and commend ourselves on the improvement that has been made. So today, we, the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association and the TEF, um, or as I'm corrected, the St. Lucia Tourism and Hospitality Association, right? Um, and the TEF has joined forces with our local suppliers to put this launch together. Um, I believe the time has come for us to recognize both the public-private partnership and all our multi-stakeholder partnerships as they're all essential um, in sustaining the industry well into the next decade. Each sector has a voice and I believe each sector is relevant and very, very important for the future growth of tourism on a whole. We can all benefit from the unified approach and common goal from all. That's the only way we will succeed if we engage every single one and every single sector. And I will say that is what the SNHTA and the TEF is all about. The OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, which is a mouthful to say, so I will say ORTCP, is a World Bank funded project. Um, it is a project that we have three participating countries of Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So essentially, the governments of those three countries have taken a loan. In the case of St. Lucia, it is worth 15 million US dollars to implement this ORTCP. St. Lucia is just starting the third year of implementing this six-year project. And um, the fundamental aim of this project is to increase visitor spend. Uh, we know that quite a large chunk of the tourism budget is traditionally spent on um, promoting the destination to get more and more people to come here. But the idea is for us to strategically invest in the product um, to ensure that when the visitors do come, that they actually leave an impactful economic footprint, thereby <coughs> optimizing the development potential of the sector. So in order to achieve this, we have a number of interventions that we are currently implementing. The largest component of this project really focuses on the redevelopment of the Castries Business District. So uh, we have 12 million out of this 15 million US dollars geared towards enhancing, beautifying the city of Castries, making it more visitor friendly, um, so to speak. Upon recent times, we are currently going through a uh uh, agro-tourism linkage project um, through assistance from the Center for Technical Cooperation in Agriculture and Rural Development called CTA. And this project thus far has enabled a massive stakeholder consultation where we brought all the different stakeholders from the farmers to the ecotourism and, 
and also the agro-tourism, the hotelers, some hotels, we brought um, the taxi drivers, the whole stakeholder section of the industry. And we had them sit at the table to discuss what are the challenges and what needs to be done. We also had them look into some major concept notes for a major project well, one, two, two, one, two or three projects that would speak to the agriculture and tourism linkage. These projects are aimed at not only looking at the linkage between agriculture and tourism and making it happen, and bringing that, that merging into reality, but also in ways that can support the ecotourism or agrotourism parks that we have on island. Further, I'm trying to move very quickly, we also have what is called the, the Reduction in Food Import Bill Project, or what is more popularly called the Seven Crop Project. But the ministry has selected strategically seven crops that we have a comparative advantage on to grow. These crops will be used to sort of target reducing the importation of these crops. And the ministry has taken on having farmers being trained, the agricultural officers being trained, and also supplying of various inputs. Also the bringing in of climate smart agricultural technologies so that the excuse of too much rain would not be an issue too much because there will be specific greenhouses that are supposed to aid that, that, that particular issue and bring it to resolve. They also will bring in some handheld tillers because tillage of the soil plays a major role in agricultural production. This is also ongoing and this project will also look into having what is called a national production schedule. And we're hoping that this national production schedule will, in its, in, in its implementation and its development, there will be consultation with the, the, um, the, the hotel sector and the agricultural sector to make sure that the importers, the hotelers, the farmers will be sort of in sync and this schedule can be followed. The schedule is aimed at looking at the peak periods on island where there are major importations of these seven crops I mentioned earlier on and then see how we can bridge that gap and have it be produced locally instead of being imported. Every year, we have our annual Linkages in Tourism trade show, where we give persons an opportunity to showcase their local offerings and their services to our hospitality sector. This trade show has always been a big, a big hit with both our hoteliers and the participants because of the type of interaction and the type of networking that they are able to do at these events. Coming, stemming from that initiative, we realized that it's a one year, it's, it happens once a year and it doesn't allow enough persons to get the opportunity to partake. So what we have decided as a tourism enhancement fund is to continue to sponsor similar initiatives throughout the year. So every time we have events, for example today we had our chef's table, we had a mini showcase where a few farmers and agro-processors were able to network and be able to engage our members and be able to create that linkage that is missing between the various sectors. Because of our Linkages in Tourism trade show, a lot of the participants will now come back to the association and say, thank you for the opportunity, thank you, we got a lot of um, persons who are interested in our products and services, but unfortunately we cannot meet the demands and sometimes, in some cases, the standards that they are looking for. So what the fund decided to do is start our Enterprise Development Fund, where persons will be able to get microloans um, that is very difficult for them to get at the banks because of um, the high risk of investment and high risk of returns in terms of those microloans. So the, 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 the Tourism Enhancement Fund has seek to create something that is less hassle-free and be able to give persons an opportunity to expand on their businesses. The Enterprise Development Fund will allow micro businesses to get loans of lower interest rates. It will also be able to help them to um, reduce on some of the hurdles that they have in terms of qualifying for some of those loans. Out of a recent 
tourism enhancement fund board meeting that we had where the unit from the Prime Minister's office presented to the trustees. Based on their request, the TEF has now agreed to sponsor the Royal St. Lucia Police Force with a vehicle. We are also going to engage the team in terms of identifying some hot spots where we can provide cameras to help resolve some of the um, burning issue, crime issues that we have in St. Lucia. And we are also looking to train a few of the boys from the Boys Training Center to help them to be able to get some practical skills that they will be able to, after leaving the Boys Training Center, will be able to engage in meaningful employment.